Hi everyone, it's an honor for me to introduce the new GoPro Hero 11 Black. Today it's not going to be a review, today we have a look at all the details that this camera offers. So I will explain you how to insert the battery, change the memory card, record a video, change the resolution, take a different frame rate. We're going through the time lapse mode. I will explain you what a time warp is and the difference between a time warp and a time lapse. And I will go through all the details. I will show you some nice accessories to have. If you have any further questions, tons of space down there. If you would like to support my channel, you go into the video description, go onto my Amazon shop, and there is a section which says GoPro. You can purchase everything out there, and that with that you can support my channel. So thanks for watching and enjoy this big tutorial now. That is one of the best suction cups for your GoPro. That is one of the best clamps you can use for your GoPro. That is one of the best mounts you can put on top of the culture of your camera and record everything that your camera sees using a GoPro on top. That's a head strap. That is a chest mount. I recommend a mini tripod like this one here. Get this power bank here as well because it offers two times power delivery, two USB-C ports to charge your GoPro very quick and to charge your cameras and MacBooks. So everyone, here's the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Some people were asking about, hey Daniel, you've done a a review or tutorial about the previous version. Can you do one of the GoPro Hero 11 Black? Because the menu is a bit different. So I decided to ask a friend and he was so kind and borrowed me his GoPro. So at the bottom side, as you can see, we do have the action mount. Pull it outwards using your fingers or use one of these action mount holders here. And to stow them, just put them back in here at the top. We have the start and stop button, which is useful to take a picture, for instance, or to start or stop recording. And here at the side is the power button. Push this button for two seconds to turn on the camera and to turn off the camera, push it once again for two seconds. This is the battery door. It's quite hard, to be honest, to remove that at the first time, especially if you don't have any nails anymore or if you have too big nails. So you need to push this little gap downwards. If you want to remove this door to be able to use the media mod and make use of an external microphone, simply push it towards the top and then you can remove it. To take out the battery, there is a latch, pull it. Here's the memory card. So make sure always to put the colored side facing inwards your GoPro. To take it off, simply push on it and then it comes out. That was a little bit too much. And that is the micro SD card I'm using for all my footage that I'm taking with the GoPro or my drone. If you want to support my channel, you can find this memory card in the video description below on my Amazon store. To put it back in, simply push it into the camera. And just for demonstration purposes, I will put the media mod to the GoPro. Simply slide it, close the side door. Big downside with the GoPro is that you can not take off your GoPro if it's connected to the media mod from any tripod if these latches here are not stowed. So first of all, we're going to try the internal microphone, then the integrated microphone of the media mod, a Wi-Fi microphone, in this case, the Rode Wireless Go, which I'm using already for four years now, the Sennheiser MKE 200 and the Sennheiser MKE 440, all listed in my Amazon shop. Here's the internal microphone of the GoPro Hero 11 Black. That is the microphone of the media mod. Here's my Sennheiser MKE 200. Since the Sennheiser MKE440 is a powered microphone, you need to select powered mic on your media mod. And if it's still not loud enough, you select powered mic plus. 
Sennheiser MKE 440 without the wind protection. Sennheiser MKE 440 now with its wind protection that appears also on your screen. Here's my Rode Wireless Go on the GoPro Hero 11 Black. That's a wireless microphone, which I'm using already for four years. Of course, you may use your GoPro Hero 11 Black as a vlogging camera, also in portrait mode. To be honest, the Rode Wireless Go was for me most of the time the best microphone because there are not too many background noises if you have it right here. The only downside today is that I forgot the little wind protection on top of this microphone which dampens the wind noises a little bit. I think the best value for money is the Sennheiser MKE 200. Since I'm using it already for two years you don't need any batteries. It comes with two different cables, one for your phone, one for your camera, it can also be your GoPro. It has this wind protection and it did a pretty good job within the last two years as I said and it's about, it retails at about 60 to 80 bucks. Media mod microphone. Sometimes I had the impression that the internal microphone of my GoPro was better than the external microphone which came with the media mod but at the end of this video I'm going to ask you the one and important question which microphone do you prefer the most I had the idea to come out once again to test out the internal microphone of the GoPro Hero 11 black and that's the result it's absolutely calm wind at the moment there's just the autobahn in the background and some birds here in the area and that's it but in terms of wind absolutely still and i hope you have now a good impression of the internal microphone another day in german winter paradise just joking rode a wireless go without too much wind to be honest and let's see if it's good for you or not it's now connected to my media mod and i'm holding the camera on a selfie stick which gives me a different perspective, but you should be able to hear me quite well. So I'm standing right here. It's a bit windy, so I turned into the other direction. However, you should hear me quite well since I'm using a wireless microphone and I'm not standing in front of the camera. However, you should hear me. Here's the front side of your GoPro Hero 11 Black. That is the lens, that is the front display, that is now the external microphone inside the media mod. On top you got a mount to attach for instance a video light or an external microphone. You have access to all buttons as you can see here's the power button, here's the record button and here at the side you got an additional cold shoe for instance, to use a video light. The advantage of having the media mod is that you have one HDMI port right here to play back all the recorded pictures and photos on a bigger screen. You have a USB-C port to charge the camera at the same time while it's recording. And right here, the 3.5 millimeter jack to attach an external microphone. To start your GoPro, make sure you tap on this button right here for about two seconds. Then you see the start screen right here. I hope you can see that. I know it's a little bit bright at the moment. I will turn the display brightness down shortly. <clears throat> First of all, select your language. That's going to be English. Then you need to agree to the legal stuff to use the GoPro. Your GPS costs a little bit more battery, but later on you will be able to view on a map like Google Maps where you took some footage. In this case, I leave it on. Then it's asking you to connect to the GoPro Quick app. First of all, skip that point by using the arrow which is pointing backwards and then you say skip setup. Then you set your current um, time zone. In this case, the summer or winter time. I just take a random date now and a random time. You can select AM, PM, or 24 hours. Swipe from the top to the bottom to go into the settings, tap on preferences, displays, scroll down, select brightness, which I will turn down now. So you see all the adjustments I'm doing using the GoPro. Screen saver, in this case, I will put it to never, just not to get disturbed all the time 
while using the GoPro. And that's it, that is our main screen of the GoPro Hero 11 Black. You can charge the GoPro the same time while you're using it. As you can see, the battery symbol changed and we're now charging. That is the GoPro display with the current settings and we're in video mode. We can record for 7 hours and 29 minutes using the memory card which is inside this GoPro. If there is no memory card inside, the symbol turns red. We are in video mode and that is in the center. And if I want to go into time-lapse mode, I simply swipe from the left to the right side. And if I want to go into photo mode, I swipe to the right. In photo mode, I can take more than a thousand pictures with the current settings, battery is charging, and here are some symbols that we speak later on in this video. First of all, let's check out some settings. Swipe from the top to the bottom and uh, on the upper left side you can see that we have enabled GPS. The app is not connected. We have two menu points indicated by that dot right here. There's the time and the date. The first symbol is voice control, which can be helpful if you're using gloves while, for instance, doing skateboarding or skiing. Keep current language, yes. And if we swipe now from the right to the left, go to preferences, swipe down and there's voice control. You can select a different language or you tap on commands and see what you can tell the GoPro to do. For instance, GoPro, start recording. GoPro, start recording. Now it's recording a video. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, photo mode. GoPro, time lapse mode. GoPro, take a picture. That's it. To switch off voice control, not to get disturbed, simply push on that symbol right there. You hear that signal tones all the times. You can turn them off if you don't want to get this feedback and now they're switched off. The symbol right here is quick capture which allows you to instantly take a video while the camera is switched off. I'll show you that right now. So I'll switch off the camera. Now it's switched off. If you push the record button for two seconds the GoPro will turn on automatically. It start to record now a video, which you can see right there. And if I push this button once again, it stops to record the video and it's powering off my GoPro, which can save you some battery at the end. And it's quite useful if you're going through a city and you don't want to keep your GoPro running at all times. You can simply just use it when you need it by using quick capture. I turn on the GoPro once again and that is a feature which I really like and in this case I would keep it. There you can lock the screen and this symbol right there is for the front screen which we'll have a look in a second. This symbol right here is orientation lock. That means if you want to use your GoPro as a dash cam and you place it with a suction cup in front of your car, it's automatically rotating the video. To avoid that you can use the orientation lock and then it's not going to flip the video around. If you're using the Max Lens Mod, which is an external lens that you can buy separately to the GoPro, make sure to use the symbol right there to enable it. That is the front screen now. As you can see, you can see everything now in my room, but you have these uh, black bars at the top and the bottom. If I change the settings, for instance, to portrait mode or to full screen, that's called full screen, not portrait mode. It's cropped in and you can only see now the camera right there. Or I can also switch off the front screen to save some battery and you can do all the changes using this symbol right there. To continue inside the GoPro menu, swipe from the right to the left. This menu is new inside the GoPro Hero 11. You have this point right here, video mode highest quality, which is basically a preset. Then it says extended battery, or if you want to get the longest battery life, you can select this point right here. However, the camera is aiming now for the longest battery time. That means you're reducing the resolution and the frame rate at the same time. Just keep that in mind. Control 
is set at the moment to easy, I would use the pro mode to be able to show you everything that the GoPro offers. Preferences, there's the auto upload where you need a subscription to the GoPro Cloud as far as I remember and you can enable that, however it probably cost you something. Wireless connections, if you want to connect to a different phone, make sure to go into this menu here and select connect device. So general, we have the beep volume, however the beep tones are switched off. If you remember, we selected this point here at the beginning. Quick capture is on, as discussed before. Default preset, last used video. So anytime you switch on the GoPro, it goes now into video mode. Auto power off after five minutes. If you don't do anything like video recording or taking pictures, the cameras will, will switch off after five minutes. The LEDs are all on at the moment. So here's one LED, there's one LED at the front. And that means that the camera is visible. So anytime you want to do a time lapse, for instance, in your garden to see if your neighbor is stepping through it, make sure to switch them off, otherwise your camera will be seen. Or it can be also useful while taking a time lapse inside your car and you have some reflections of the LEDs on your screen. You want to avoid that and then switch off the LEDs. Anti-flicker, you can switch between 60 and 50 Hertz if you're living in the United States. They use 60 Hertz and you will get some different frame rates. That means, for instance, you get 4K, which is the resolution with 30 FPS frames per second or 60 FPS or 120 FPS. And if you're living in Europe, for instance, in Germany, we use 50 Hertz. And that means we're recording with 4K 25, 50 or 100 frames per second. So anytime you want to have a different frame rate, use anti-flicker and change to 50 or either 60 Hertz. To go out of this menu, swipe up and then you can use this arrow right here. GPS, that has been discussed, voice control has been discussed, displays. As you can see, the orientation we're using all, that means if you're flipping the camera, it will automatically turn the footage as well. Screensaver, never. Brightness set at the moment to 10%, which saves a lot of battery, trust me. And rear screen grid, we can have a grid there. So horizontal and vertical lines to be able to orientate the camera in the direction where it's required. Date and time, that's self-explained. And here is the mod. So that is the media mod, which allows you to use external microphones. So this here is an external microphone by a company called Sennheiser. It runs without batteries. It costs around about 60 to 80 bucks and I can recommend it highly. It got a tripod mount on the lower side as well. And I can slide it into the media mod which you can't do without the media mod. And then I can plug it into the media mod. And then you can see that there is now an option to select a microphone. In this case, since this microphone does not run with batteries, it's a standard microphone. And if this standard microphone is recording at a low level, you can select standard mic plus. And if you have a powered microphone, which is self-explained, so that is a microphone that is using a battery, you can select powered mic and also powered mic plus if you think that the volume is too low. So in this case, I'm using standard mic plus because I know that I need it to be a little bit more louder. About regulatory stuff and reset, you can format the SD card right here to get rid of all the files. And if you're selling your GoPro and you want to have it at the factory reset, go down to this point and select it. Go out of this menu by stepping through these points. And anytime you see one of these lines, that means you can swipe it. To play back your files, nothing easier than that, simply swipe from the bottom to the top. That is a video we recently took together. If you want to get some additional information about the video, there's an info button right there, which is really hard to reach sometimes. So you see the date, the time, if there's any preset, the resolution 5.3K, 
frame rate 30 and so on and so on. You can delete this clip if you want to by pushing the bin right here, select delete and you can highlight for instance this picture or a video by using the flag down there. If you want to delete multiple files at once, push on that grid and then I can select one, two, three, push on the bin and select delete. To go out of this menu, use the bars. We are now back in live view. And only if you're using the media mod, you get the audio meter down here. That is the video mode now. And I'll go through these points here very quick. To start and stop a video, push this button right here. Now we're starting to record a video and the time elapsed is set there. To stop the video, push that button once again. These ones are called shortcuts. You can change them, you can delete them, or you can set a different shortcut right there, which will come later on to this point. So this one here is for instance, the image stabilizer, which is set to on at the moment. You can switch it off. You can use boost or auto boost. And anytime you push the image stabilizer to boost, it will crop into the footage a little bit. Just keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily switch it off. I would use just the on mode because it works quite fine most of the time. Anytime you're using the zoom, it doesn't enhance your quality. So it crops into the footage, which doesn't get better then. So I would only use it to do minor adjustments. Keep that in mind. Then you can change the field of view by pushing this button right there. That is white. That is super view, which is nice for skiing or snowboarding. That is linear, which tightens all the edges here in the background. And that is linear plus horizon lock. Let's change some settings together. As you can see, we are now recording in 4K, 50 frames per second, and we're using the white angle. You might see there 60 frames, 30 frames, or 100 frames, whatever. And if you want to see 60 frames, for instance, you need to go into the menu, preferences, general, anti-flicker, 60 hertz. There you get the maximum frame rates possible. Now we're recording in 4K, 60 in white. And with the current settings, we have 4K 60 in white. We can record with the memory card inserted six hours and 59 minutes. I do have already some footage on it, so you might see a different number. Let's change the frame rate together. Tap on that. And as you can see, you got now tons of presets. Down there, you, for instance, it's really easy to take a slow motion scene by using this preset down there. We would record in this case in 1080p, which is full HD, using 240 frames per second. Cinematic is uh, default as 4K 30 and you got also activity 2.7K 60 using super view. But let's do some small changes here. Let's say you want to change the resolution. Click on here and 1080p would give you a maximum frame rate of 240 frames per second. If I select 4K, these ones are grayed out because the GoPro can only record in 4K using a maximum of 60 frames per second or either 24 or 30 frames. And as I said, you can change them to 50 or 25 frames per second. Therefore, you need to select 50 Hertz instead of 60 Hertz. You get also a different format, 4 to 3, which only allows you to take a 2.7K footage using 60 frames per second. The higher the resolution, the more details you will see in your video. The higher the resolution and the frame rate is, the more capacity you need on your memory card. So let's take a 4K footage using 60 frames per second. If you want to get out of this menu, tap on the center. Here you can change the lens, the image stabilizer, and you can also do a scheduled recording. 
That means if you have a sport contest, for instance, and you have no friend who is supporting you on that day, you can place your GoPro on a tripod, put it next to the field, and then you can make a scheduled departure once you know when is your time for the contest. And you can also set there a duration. Let's tap on that very quick. The maximum duration would be three hours. And the scheduled departure, you can set the date and the time. You can also set a timer and Protune are the settings that are useful for everyone out there who is doing a lot of video editing and post. For instance, you can select your own shutter speed, white balance, the ISO minimum and maximum ISO. And this is an important point because here you can set your colors. We're now recording in a neutral color. You do have also a flat profile for everyone who's doing color grading. And you do have also a vibrant preset that is useful if you are out in, for instance, Scotland and you have these wonderful green hills with a blue sky and some clouds passing by. In this case, I would go for neutral or vibrant. And these ones are the shortcuts we are just talking about. So you can change them. Lower left, lower right, upper left, I selected also color. I can select also a different shortcut, for instance, the white balance. And if I want to reset them, just swipe to the bottom and then you can restore the previous preset. So if I go back, I have selected now the white balance as my shortcut. If I go down, you see it's changing in a cool color and that is 6000 Kelvin, which is a warm color. I can go also to auto. You can also change the order by using the small icon right there. You tap on this one and then you need to select the preset and then you can put it for instance to the bottom. If you think that uh, slow motion is the feature that is required the most, you can put it on top and you can also restore the previous settings by using the small icon right here. A small thing if, for instance, if you don't want to use a frame rate of 240, you can also select 120. A small tip for you, the higher the frame rate, the more light is required for the camera to take good footage. Let's jump into the photo mode. As you can see, we're now in video mode. Here's the time lapse mode and here's the photo mode. You can either swipe with your finger into the photo mode or you can use this button here at the side by using it just for one click. So that's the photo mode. And as you can see, I was just taking a night photo. Let's go to the normal photo mode. There it is, you got also these shortcuts around the photo mode as well. You got a timer, you can set a different lens. You have four different options of taking a picture, for instance, a standard one, a raw picture, which is recommended if you're doing any color adjustments in post by using Adobe Lightroom, for instance, HDR and a super photo. Just try them out by yourself and you will see which kind of picture you require for your work. For instance, if I would take an HDR picture, that means high dynamic range, I would use it during daylight conditions when I have a lot of shadows and lights at the same time and I want to get kind of an equal contrast. In this case, I would go for an HDR. I would go for a raw picture if I want to do any adjustments and post. Make sure you got a raw converter like Adobe Lightroom to process these images. And if you just want to take some pictures, just use the standard mode. You can zoom in, which doesn't enhance the image quality. It's just for minor adjustments. And like in video mode, if you tap on that, you have some options here. For instance, you can take a night photo, a burst, or a normal photo, you can do all the adjustments right here. So you can change the lens, output, scheduled, capture. That means if you want to take a picture of your garden while you're sleeping at two o'clock in the morning, make a scheduled capture, and then the camera will take a picture on the next date at this time, and uh, you can still sleep. You can also use a timer function up to 10 seconds. If you use the record button up there, you can see it's running down from 10 seconds to place the camera somewhere so you can take a picture of yourself with the entire family around you and everyone can be on the picture. Burst might be quite interesting for you if you're doing kind of a sport activity or something like that. So if you tap on the burst rate, this for instance means 
60 pictures in 10 seconds. Make sure you got a, a memory card with a fast write and read speed. So this one is, for instance, three, 10 photos in three seconds. Night photo, here you can select the shutter speed by yourself or you leave it in auto. You can also select the output. Either the camera saves this as a JPEG file or as a RAW file. During a night picture, it doesn't seem to me required to take it in a RAW format, so I would keep it probably in JPEG, but it's up to you. You have also scheduled capture, a timer, zoom. You can do some pro adjustments like the white balance, minimum, maximum ISO, let's see what the maximum is, ISO 800, sharpness, and you can also select different shortcuts by just tabbing on them. Let's jump into my most favorite mode, which is the time-lapse mode. And there we go. We got two shortcuts right there because we're taking at the moment a night-lapse, but it should be a time warp once you open that mode for the first time. We have three different shortcuts here. That is the speed. You can try it out by yourself. There is the zoom function as i said it doesn't improve the image quality it's just for minor adjustments there's the lens and a time warp is basically a video which is played back faster and a time lapse is something where you take where you choose an interval for instance of two seconds and the camera only captures a moment after two seconds and merges it together to a final video, while a time warp records the entire video and it's just being playbacked faster. You can use it while driving in your car or walking through the city. If you want to do some adjustments there, you can change the resolution up to 5.3K, 1080p or 4K. Here's the speed. If you use the slider, you can see the result. So 30X in this case means a five minute of recording creates about a 10 second of a time warp video. Pretty easy. If you go down, there's one of, uh, by using 5x, you have one minute of recording creates about 10 seconds of time warp video. If I would walk from A to B, I would probably use 5x. And if I drive from New York to Los Angeles and I would keep the GoPro in front of my screen for the entire ride, I would probably use 30x. Make sure it's connected to a power bank or so. You have also a scheduled capture, a duration, a timer, protune settings, and you can also select different shortcuts or restore them. These ones are new, so they haven't been in the last GoPro version. You got now star trails, light painting, or vehicle lights. For instance, if you use vehicle lights, it's pretty amazing. You just place your GoPro in front of a motorway and then every car that passes by, which has its lights on, you only see the lights, but not the car anymore because the camera uses a longer exposure time. Time-lapse is one of my favorite features here because you can change the resolution up to 5.3K. You can change the lens. You can also do another format so you can either take pictures or let the camera take a video. You can switch between those two modes. You can select an interval and here's my recommendation for you. Anytime you do something that takes a lot of time building a house, I would go for a long interval. Anytime you do something that happens quite quick, I would take a short interval. So if you're cooking, take an interval of 0.5 or one second. Having an interval of 60 minutes, that means you need more than one day to get one second of video. Make sure your camera is connected to a power bank, for instance, while doing that. Otherwise, probably the camera will turn off shortly after you started the time lapse. If you are driving in your car and you just want to have a fast time lapse you can take an interval of two to five seconds for instance you can also select a scheduled capture which is nice because you don't need to come out of your tent in the morning to take a beautiful time lapse of the sunrise you can do it with the scheduled capture you can set a duration and you can also select a timer fly down here as well and you get also some shortcuts and the last feature i would like to show you is the night lapse you have also the 
option to take just pictures and merge them together later on in post or take a video and the camera merges the pictures together. You can select an interval or keep it to auto and the interesting point is that you have now the shutter speed as well. If you are in the Grand Canyon and you have absolutely no artificial light, take a long shutter speed. If you are in the city and you have a lot of light available and it's just dark, use a short shutter speed or keep it in auto. You can also select a scheduled capture if you place the GoPro on top of your roof and you control it using Bluetooth and it's connected to an external power source. You can take, for instance, time lapse of the night sky. You can select the duration and all these kind of things like Protune settings and shortcuts are available down here as well. I didn't know that I would like this feature so much, it's called light painting. If you tap on this one, the camera uses a longer shutter speed and if you have one of these light tubes, you can walk in front of the camera and draw something. And if you play it back, it looks quite amazing. So make sure you turn off all the lights, you get one of these light tubes, link in the video description below and you go out and start shooting some cool footage. Please everyone make sure to go on the App Store, can either be here on iOS or the Google Play Store and type in GoPro, search and then you download this app, it's called GoPro Quick Video Editor, it's 250 megabytes and then we continue once it's downloaded. Tap on the app and there we go. We are inside the GoPro app, which is by the way for free. Only if you have enabled any subscriptions, for instance to GoPro Cloud, to be able to upload all your content, it will cost you something. Let's jump into GoPro, connect a GoPro. Okay, make sure Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are enabled. Would you like? to find and connect to devices on your local network, allow and we select now GoPro Hero 11. My camera, I'll just verify that the camera is on. So my camera is on and if you don't see this settings, you need to go and follow these steps up here. So you go into your settings, preferences, and then you select wireless connections exactly like it's done up here and then you select GoPro app continue, got it but the camera is on. I'll do it once again, like it's done over there. We found your GoPro, which is super nice. Connect camera, now it's pairing. That's why you need Bluetooth to find this camera. And now it says camera paired. You can give that GoPro a specific name. That means if you're using multiple cameras, it's kind of nice to give them a different name. It's connecting. And the connection between those two devices is absolutely for free because I got asked many times, will it cost me anything? No, it won't cost you anything as long as you're just connected between those two devices. If you have a subscription to, for instance, the GoPro Cloud, then you need to have a registered account and then it will cost you something. No, I'll do this later. No, thanks. And let's go. We're inside the GoPro app. My GoPro is charging at the moment through a power bank. With the current settings, I can record a video for seven hours and 18 minutes. If you want to delete the camera, make sure to tap on these three dots and remove a camera. You can also enable the auto upload, which you need to subscribe, as I said. You can start a live stream by tapping on this symbol right there. You can either do that through GoPro, Facebook, YouTube or Twitch. At the moment I'm in video mode, which is indicated by that symbol. If I go into time-lapse mode, it's indicated by this symbol. And if I want to go into photo mode, it's indicated by this symbol right here. If I want to record a video, I simply push on this button right here and then the timer starts. If you see something now, which is important for you, you can set a highlight tag exactly at this second and if you want to stop this video push this button once again. You can enable preview which will cost you more battery or you can leave it. I can go into my time lapse, I can go to time warp for instance, it's the same menu as on your camera, 
That is my photo mode. I can also enable burst or night photos. I can do any adjustments here on the photo settings. I can take a picture right now. There it is. And if I want to enable the preview, just to show you, it's starting the preview. Some phones do not support, for instance, 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. So if you see any message there where it says, well, showing a low resolution because it's not supported, that's normal and that depends also on your phone. You can zoom in using this slider right here. I can start to record a video. Preview is preview not available since we're recording now in 4K 60 and that is too much for my phone at the moment. That is an iPhone 13 Pro. I can change the resolution if I want to, for instance, to 1080p and I can take a different frame rate for instance 24 frames per second, I can start to record a video and if I push on my screen it doesn't allow me to preview the current video file. If you want to stop that video push that button right here. Then you can view your media by pushing at this button right here. These are some clips I recently took. That is a video file. Audio quality seems to be really nice with a Disco Pro. If you want to edit the clip, make sure to select the cutter right here. You can set a tag. For instance, if you have recorded a long video on your last trip to the Bahamas, for instance, and exactly at seven minutes and 30 seconds, you saw a fish coming out of the water, you can set a highlight tag, which you will see later on in any GoPro software. I can delete this clip from the memory card and I can share it with friends by using this symbol right there. I can select multiple clips at once. I can download them or I can delete them from the micro SD card which is inserted in the GoPro. Yeah, and that was the GoPro app, really simple. If you want to do more video editing with some sound effects, some filters, and if you want to put some video files and pictures and time lapses together, you can go down here to the GoPro Studio and then you can sign in or subscribe to GoPro or you can select my edits and then you can create a new one down here. So that was my tutorial about this GoPro Hero 11 Black. As I said at the beginning, you can support my channel by buying all the stuff using the links provided in my Amazon shop. And if you have any further questions, make sure you leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and all the best for 2023.